Hey guys, this is Logan here with Hydra572. Now you may have seen my last video, it was some hard use bushcraft type testing of my Ontario Rat 1. Uh, the lock did fail. I've since then been reminded by a couple of my subscribers, Sinric and Superfly Fat Guy, that if you ever do have to do batoning with a folding knife, that you're not sure that the lock will hold up, that you can just disengage the lock. Um, and baton with just the blade, and when you need to pull the knife out of whatever you're batoning through, you just re-engage the lock, pull it on out, reposition it, disengage the lock, start again. Uh, and I was aware of that. I don't know why I wasn't implementing that technique. I think what I was thinking is that, honestly, I thought that that lock would stand up to going through at least that 2x4 without failing. Um, I wanted to do some testing with the more conventional technique. Um, but just be aware. I was thinking about having like a retraction modification type video. I don't think I'm going to do it. Uh, just because I could already tell you how it's going to go. That method of batoning is slower and more tedious than with a fixed blade, but it will work until uh, if you were actually having to do your shelter craft, bushcraft, um, for survival, I think eventually you would see deformation in either the pivot or the uh, liners or both. Um, but that's not what this video is about. That's neither here nor there. This video is about advertising, my philosophy about knife advertising, and more specifically, honesty in advertising. Now, the Ontario Rat 1's advertising, the blurbs that are on the manufacturer's website, that are on uh, retailers' websites, they're all pretty subtle. This knife is made by Randall's Adventure Training, the same people that make the SE knives or EC knives. I say SE. Um, and you might be able to notice that from the familiar blade shape and all that. Um, but the one blurb that's standing out to my memory from the advertising, it was on a catalog, I believe, and uh, it said, we're sure that you'll find that the line of Rat1 folders will stand up to the test of durability. Um, and part of the reason that I'm not upset that this lock failed is because that isn't a really wild, boisterous claim, the way that some other knives are advertised. Um, no need to call out a whole bunch of names, but we've seen it on some CRKTs, DPMX, or DPX Hest knives. Um, and you guys have seen it around in all sorts of stuff. Just advertising, uh, saying our knife is really durable, it's a folding knife that rivals fixed blade strength, and uh, all this. And what I just wanted to say is if you're advertising your knife that way, it had better be able to stand up to that. Uh, that sort of use, if you're advertising it as a all-in-one survival blade, the only knife that you're going to need when you're out survival, training, anything like that, then it had better be able to stand up to that batoning that we did with this blade and more. Uh, I'm not at all accusing Ontario. Or I had hoped that it would stand up a little bit better than it did, but that was mostly my choice. I wasn't going off their advertising. Um, so a knife like my Spyderco Resilience, the way that it's been marketed, I wouldn't have even thought of doing that testing because in the advertising for the Resilience, the Tenacious line, Spyderco talks about it being a budget folder and about the compromises that they had to make along the way, how they're doing the best that they can do to give you a quality blade at a price point, and uh, they even talk a little bit about how if you hard used it, you may have to dispose of it afterwards. And uh, I think that's really cool. That's honesty in advertising. Um, I don't think the Rat1 guys were being dishonest. But I think if you're going to call something a survival blade, that it should be able to stand up to light woodcraft with a conventional lock-closed technique. Um, I don't think that knife manufacturers are designing their knives to be used with that non-conventional technique. Although I do think it's a great technique if you ever are put in that position where maybe this blade is all you have. Then uh, you will get more life out of the thing by disengaging the lock and batoning. Um, but yeah, that's all I wanted to say, is manufacturers be responsible with the way that you're advertising your blades, uh, because if you're not, if you're saying that your knife is something that it isn't, if you're saying it can stand up to abuse, and in reality it can't, then there are people like me, like others on YouTube, that will get your blade and they will test it and uh, report on it unfavorably, whereas if you had just been honest and uh, said, this is what our knife is capable of, these are the reasons why you should buy it, um, then you wouldn't be getting that flag. I know a couple of blades that have gotten really negative reviews solely because they made unreasonable claims, um, and that didn't really need to be the case. And that's true of a whole bunch of other products as well. I just wanted to make this video centered around knives. So uh, people don't be fooled by advertising. Um, knife manufacturers that want a good relationship with your customers, be responsible with your advertising. And uh, yeah, looking forward to more testing, more blade reviews with great knife manufacturers here at Hydra 572. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more of the same.